you are Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Locked On Jazz for the 4th of August. Kevin Pelton drops out some grades as well as some predictions for the season. Preseason schedule leaking its way out. Ricky Rubio with some interesting comments in a conference call. Those will be the hot topics we hit today on Locked on Jazz. Pow. How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. Thanks for tuning in to today's show, which is brought to you by Murdoch Hyundai and Devin Cash of Equity Real Estate. Thanks so much. Hope you're good. Um, had a good conversation. Really enjoy each time I kind of get a chance to talk to some more people around and, uh, who, who listen to the show. I, I had a nice conversation with a guy from Vivint yesterday about the show. Um, he'll laugh that I'm mentioning this right now or he might not hear it. Um, but, uh, just, it's great to bump into you guys and talk to everybody, um, who's, who's a part of the show and, and been a part of it for uh, a while. All right. Kevin Pelton's done a ton of work, just incredible. You catch him on the jump today, our good friend. Uh, is making. I don't know if it's his jump debut, but it's one of his jump appearances. Also, I just did a conversation with David Thorpe. We talked a lot about how you run an offense with Ricky Rubio and the value of Gobert rim rolling, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that conversation. So that'll be at Locked On NBA for you. All right, let's get to Pelton. Uh, the first thing he did was preseason grades, um, and then the second thing he did – was records, and so I wanted to um, I wanted to get those, those start there uh, with everything. The Eastern Conference grades were just brutal, right? Like Hawks D plus, Celtics he gave a B plus, Hornets he gave a B plus, Bulls F, Cavaliers C minus, Pistons D, Pacers F, Heat D, Knicks F. I mean, wow, gave the Raptors a B. I might have been more uh, positive to them a little bit. And the Wizards a C. So Pelton wasn't kidding around here. Uh, handing out his grades. Uh, evidently, Kevin is a tough, tough grader. Is what we um, is what we found out uh, from Kevin in that. Now the Western Conference, he was a little bit more um, positive about, right? Uh, and not on everyone, but he he was a little bit more positive on his Western Conference. Grades. Dallas, he gave an A, which I thought was interesting. Um, and basically, I think, you know, with a, giving them credit for a direction that they suddenly now with Dirk getting older, uh, they got New Orleans Noel last year. You got Smith this year. Uh, and people think he's going to be great. Denver gets an A minus with Millsap on the three year, $90 million deal. That team option is the key there. Warriors got an A plus, which they should. One, you got Durant under money, and then their subtle moves. Omri Caspi is better than Ian Clark. Nick Young's probably better than Ian Clark. Javel McGee and David West are back. Rockets A plus. I mean, just loading up, right? And the PJ Tucker and Mba Mute is nice. Clippers got a B minus. Lakers an A minus. A little surprised on that, um, but you know, I get. I, I disagree. I, I think that when you had when you're giving up D'Angelo Russell, who is a former number two pick, that quickly, there's a you sh- there should be some punishment uh, for that. Timberwolves got an A. They added the most win shares of any team. Grizzlies C. Pelicans C minus. The Rondo Holiday match is weird. Thunder A plus. Couldn't agree more. The adi- Paul Patrick Patterson's better than Sabonis, who they gave up. Uh, Raymond Felton's a nice backup, though he's, he faded a little bit last year. And then, obviously, Paul George. Uh, Phoenix got a C. Portland got a B-minus dumping talent. But a good move because they had to. And a good draft with Zach Collins. Sacramento got a C. I would agree. I don't. And when we get to Kevin's win totals, um, that'll probably even make more sense that I don't understand what Sacramento did. The Spurs, the only team he criticized. And the Jazz got a B-minus. Um as he says, as with the Clippers, I'm not factoring in Hayward's decision to sign elsewhere. Only how the Jazz responded. With no reasonable replacement available, Utah split its cap space among Jarebko, Cephalosha, Udo, all favorites of ESPN's Real Plus Minus, which 
who should help the Jazz depth and defense, all non-guaranteed salaries for 18-19. Add in Rubio and Donovan Mitchell, who dominated defensively during Summer League, and the Jazz looked to upgrade a unit that was third in the league on defense last year. The question is, who's going to score? Uh, Utah might regret paying Joe Ingles $50 million over four years, though a descending salary mitigates some of that risk. Fair assessment. So the Jazz get a B minus from Pelton. The plus minus thing is really an interesting concept, and, and we've we've talked about this a little bit. The Jazz just seem to be, when they lost Hayward, used their money to put together a roster of players who are just a little above average at every position, and if Dante can get there, then all of a sudden you're a little above average at every position uh, all night. Tim Roy, the Warriors play-by-play announcer, dropped me a line the other day that said, check out our on-off numbers with Udo in the years we had him in 2011-12. The offense with Udo on the floor, and he, he only played 827 minutes, so he played 26% of their minutes, uh, was a plus 8, or plus 9.7, and the defense, and the offensive rating when he was off the floor was a minus 8, so a 17 point difference. He gets traded that year in the uh, Monte Ellis deal. Same thing happens in Milwaukee. He's a plus 6 offensively and a minus 1 without him. Seems really kind of surprising. The Je- the Warriors' off- defensive rating with Udo was a minus was a hundred, and then without him was a one eleven, so a minus eleven difference. Same thing happened in Milwaukee, minus six difference. Like those numbers, that's pretty dramatic. Go to his next or his previous year with Golden State again. He plays about twenty six percent of their minutes. Offense is plus six with him, minus six without him. Defense is, the defensive rating was a a 106 with him on and a 113 with him off. It's pretty stunning. So Udo might just be one of those subtle players where everything gets a little bit better with him on the floor. Jarebko is, I think, one of those players that's just, a little bit above average and kind of right on that tilt, right? His effective field goal percentage last year is 52%. That's above average. His true shooting percentage is above average. So it's it's kind of the, to Kevin's point, they just piece together these slightly above average pieces, and then, you know, what happens when you need those star players? We're probably lacking uh, a little bit in that regard. Uh, today's show is brought to you by... Devin Cash of Equity Real Estate. If you're in the market to do something uh, with your house, whether it's to buy or or sell a new house, or you just want a market assessment, Devin's your guy. I got an email from Timothy McKee. I got this just earlier this month. He said, I just want to email and tell you a bit about my experience with Devin Cash. He was great. My wife, Whitney, and I both work. Somewhat different hours, so it's pretty unusual for us both to be available at the same time. We'd go over to houses at night. Ones that had gone on the market that morning and we'd be under contract by morning, the market was unreal. We ended up finding an ideal house, fenced in backyard, less than 10 minutes from my work. Devin got in touch with the sellers to basically give us a contract uh, by having a good relationship with the other realtor. And this is the same story we hear about Devin every time. He was fantastic to work with, worked around our crazy schedules, and even helped us set up my automatic sprinkler system once we got in the house. He was really helpful, uh, walking us through every step of the process so we knew exactly what to expect and what we had to do. We ended up with a great house, thanks in no small part to Devin Cash. I mean, really, this has been so fun to watch our our listeners go to Devin uh, and have these great experiences with Devin. Uh, So make sure, if you're looking to buy or sell a house, that you uh, consider Devin Cash. Give him a call, 801-759-1495. That's 801-759-1495, 759-1495. All right, so Pelton's next project, he's been on fire, was win-loss projections. And he projects the Utah Jazz to make the playoffs as the eight seed. 
be a fun season if if what Pelton had comes out. He has the Warriors at 62, the Rockets at 55. Uh, the Spurs at 53, the Timberwolves at 50. Boy, people are high on them, maybe rightfully so. Um, the three-point shooting seems limited. Boy, Jimmy Butler's good. Oklahoma City at 49, Clippers at 49. Which injuries can play some part here? Denver at 47. And the Utah Jazz at 45. Just nuzzling by the New Orleans Pelicans and the Portland Trailblazers. What's interesting is then there's a drop off. So for all the talk of how tough it's going to be, there's, you know, there's 10 playoff teams in the West. 10 playoff teams. In the West that you're battling with. Sacramento, just to the point I made earlier about their offseason, comes in 15th. 27 wins. So why have you added Vince Carter, George Hill, and Zach Randolph? Like, I just think they did that early. That's my criticism of what I, what I saw out of Sacramento is why now? Why do that now? The, uh, the Jazz, 45 wins. Right about, you know what? I know a lot of us have tried to talk ourselves into how do we get to 50. It seems as though that's uh, that's probably a stretch. Uh, but if things go right in any way, in any of the kind of, I mean, I think there's this whole Rubio, Mitchell, Hood, Exum phenomena that something could go right. Favors. we got about five things that I think could go right. If one or two of them goes right, then you make the jump and you're a little better than you thought, and then hopefully you're not in this quagmire of 45 wins of Portland of San of New Orleans at 44.2 and Portland at 44. Uh, the Portland not making the playoffs would be hugely disappointing for them, and same thing with New Orleans. Lots can change. Clippers' health is a big part of it. Frankly, Oklahoma City's health is a big part of it because they just have that one, you know, it's a one- or two-man show, and so something can can go awry. Uh, but not a big I think I think that seems pretty accurate to where you would suspect these teams to fall. And if we have a 45-win season come on off a Hayward departure while we have the kind of four developmental questions taking place with Rubio. Is he a different player? Can he really be Jason, you know, Jason Kidd-esque? I mean, that's Hall of Fame, but you keep hearing the Jazz mention that. Can Mitchell be big time? Can Exum make a jump? Can Hood be a primary scorer? Uh, those four questions being developed while battling for the eighth playoff spot sounds like a really fun season to me. Excited for it. Uh, speaking of that, preseason kind of is leaking out. So we'll play an Australian team, the Sydney Kings, on October 2nd. And then the Phoenix Suns announced their preseason schedule, and it included two jazz games on it. Uh, and those two jazz games are home the 6th. And the Jazz on the ninth. I would suspect everyone seems to be playing five games. So you kind of just look at it. We've got the second mark, the sixth mark, the ninth marked. One signature to Quinn Snyder over the since he's taken over is a desire to uh, get the preseason schedule done and almost have another little mini training camp before the season starts. So I would suspect we do something on the road on either side of that Suns game. Get out on the road, stay on the road for one trip, not two. uh, Or, right, and so so if that other preseason game is on the road on the 7th or 8th, um, you might come back home for for something. Or you might stick a, we have a 2nd and a 6th, maybe we're going to stick another home game in between the 2nd and the 6th, then finish on the road, then come back. I'd be surprised if we went home second, road fourth, home sixth, road 
seventh home, you know, row or home seventh or eighth uh, row road ninth, if that makes sense. Um, I I just don't see, you know, that's not what we've done since Quinn's been around. We've we've isolated the two different things. So, you know, keep an eye on that um, and see whether or not. Um, and there's nothing. There's nothing on the schedule. You can't like I, you know, the crafty ways you go find out what's going on. Janet Jackson's in town October 16th. Okay, um, I think the season opens on the 17th, so maybe we're opening on the road. But there's not Tim McGraw's on the September 27th is the first event in that arena. Uh, there's nothing to really tell you uh, what's coming up. I know that we're uh, the Harlem Globetrotters are in town in early November, so we're likely out of town November 4th and 5th on the on the road. That's how you can kind of play around and. And find out some of these things. Uh, Ricky Rubio had a press conference, had some interesting conversation comments. I want to get to those. First, though, it is anniversary month in August for Murdoch Hyundai. That's right. Murdoch Hyundai is, does their anniversary sale every single August, and it's August. So excited. I went down there the other day because I'd screwed up and I had to go get something taken care of. And I tried to talk Blake into continuing the other deal. He was like, why do I need to do that? i got the anniversary sale. Even gets better. Oil changes and brakes for life. The anniversary sale includes $6,000 off on the Tucson SE, which I'm driving right now, and the $6,000 off on the Santa Fe. Let me tell you two things about Murdoch Hyundai, and they involve the two words, Murdoch and Hyundai. So let's start with the Murdochs. Got to know Blake and the family is uh, – from the very beginning when, when Adam Chase and Chase Marketing came to me and said, are you interested in doing this? I said, I want to meet them. I spent some, a day with them, and then I've really gotten to know Blake since this is a group that is just committed to making sure that when you leave their dealership, you speak well of the family name. It's, it's that simple. They phrase it as no regrets. Uh, I think it's exceptional service. And, they're gonna make, and there's a cool little customer board in the building at 4646 South State Street with all the letters they've gotten back from people talking about. Second thing is Hyundai. I didn't know much about Hyundai. Uh, didn't, didn't quite have the knowledge base of, of what, this, what, what they built and how good they've become. And have eye-opening experience to drive the Hyundai brand, see how many Hyundais are on the road, and see uh, what you can get for an incredible price. The Hyundai Santa Fe Sport, which I was driving earlier, is just an amazing car. If you go go to their website right now, it started at twenty nine seven. We're getting six thousand dollars back, some other things, and I mean the deals are just awesome. So make sure you stop by forty six forty six South State Street in Murray. Wish them happy anniversary and take part in the anniversary sale. All right, Rubio. I I thought there was two things out of the Rubio. Conf- press conference that he had that were really eye-opening uh, or awesome. One was just how often he's talking to Quinn. You know, that he is talking to Quinn um, all all the time. Uh, once a week, he says that they have been talking. Um, he feels very engaged with the, with the process, uh, connected to how they're building the offense, I, I it's that's a really cool um really, really cool thing to see the Quinn and this is where Quinn's great. The, the confidence that Quinn's gonna give Rubio and in the locked on NBA conversation I just had with David Thorpe, you'll you see a bunch of you hear a bunch of comments that um you hear a bunch of comments that the that you know, from Rubio's beginning of time in Spain, that he wasn't really given the opportunity or the confidence to shoot, and some, and I, and he's just going to play with a confidence and a zest. Hopefully, that is is brought to him from uh, from Quinn. We we play such a smart game, and he's such a smart player with so much thinking and reading. And, and at times, honestly, the downside of that is it can. It can stymie your just kind of freedom because you're trying to play right and thinking. And anytime you're thinking, you're playing in that fast. But it's it's the it's the smart right way to play. It gets you. He's going to prosper in that and hopefully make him very confident. What will be interesting is he's like a guy like Donovan Mitchell who plays with such incredible zest. Whether he can maintain that freedom in, inside of this and not worrying about whether or not he uh, is you know breaking the, the system or, or doing things wrong. So um, we'll see. Uh, but I think you're going to see a very, very uh, confident Ricky Rubio, and I'm not sure you've ever seen that uh, prior 
in his play. The other one was how he talked about Gobert as an offensive player. I mean, I just thought that was, you know what? I thought that was really eye-opening and correct. I've never played with an offensive player like this. And that's the way to talk about R- Rudy Gobert is that he's a offensive player. And um, I've never played with a set NBA yet with a center that can really jump that high, can throw lobs. It fits my game really well. It's going to be great having a teammate that fits my game a lot. We're going to be buddies. That's um, that's cool because I don't think that we've, you know, that's the right approach and style to be thinking about having him as a teammate. And uh, too often, I, you know, I, I met a nice guy the other day at Barnes and Noble and Sugar House, and he came up to me. I really think I really think Gobert's gonna be able to establish a fifteen foot jump shot. Like why? Like I mean, I guess, but why? It's a low percentage bad shot that he won't be. He's not gonna be fifty five percent at or anything. And I mean, maybe if it makes him feel good and you give him a touch early, but why? I want him. I don't want him to start popping. I want him rolling. Like the worst thing that happen is he starts getting obsessed with a jump shot and starts rolling, not rolling to the basket. So it, it's interesting how we view offensive players at this point in the game, and I certainly would say that I believe in him as a roller and a gravity player above the rim, and that being huge. All right, that is today's Locked on Jazz. I think we're off next week. We might sneak one in, but... I'm spending a week away from the house, so I think there's a real chance um, that we will not have a show next week. Um, I'm allowed, right? Right? Today's show is brought to you by Devin Cash of Equity Real Estate. You can give Devin a call at 801-759-1495 and stop by and see our friends at Murdoch Hyundai this weekend. Have a great weekend. This is Locked On Jazz, part of Locked On Podcast Network.